What if there was a way you could buy a cryptocurrency that was basically cash, meaning it didn't change value, but it was still transferable and tradable as a crypto? Given that there's a white plumber's van across our road for three days now, we do want to say that this video was made for education and entertainment purposes only. Anything you do outside of this video is on you. We just want to help you make the most educated decisions. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, where we explain the topics of cryptocurrency using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can can easily understand them. We usually make a joke about it being so simple that your grandparents could understand it, but <laughs> we're running out of ideas. So today we want to explain what stable coins are and how you can best use them to leverage your crypto trades. First off, what is a stable coin? A stable coin is technically a utility token built upon another coin's blockchain. If you don't know the differences between what a coin and a token is, you should definitely check out our video on that topic. But the entire goal of a stable coin is to create a cryptocurrency that isn't volatile and doesn't change price. Stable coins, they offer the convenience, privacy, and security of crypto while offering the stability and trust of fiat money. Just like here at Whiteboard Crypto, where we try to offer the best of both worlds. Education about crypto and entertainment using stories and examples. That way you're not bored through the entire video. By the way, if you haven't already, you should click that like button because it helps keep our motivation to create more videos stable. A stable coin is pegged to the US dollar and should always equal $1, theoretically. Bitcoin, the first cryptocurrency was actually created to be used as a store of value. However, since it's not widely adopted and there aren't very many regulations on it yet, the price fluctuates a lot. So much so that it is classified as a speculative investment. So what if you want to store money using crypto technology, but you don't want to risk your investment with the price fluctuations of crypto in today's world? Well, you can use a trusted stablecoin. Before we get too deep into stablecoins, you first need a refresher on the differences between a centralized exchange and a decentralized exchange. A centralized exchange is an exchange that is owned by one entity, like Coinbase, but they allow you to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. Since they are a company, they are technically regulated by the government that they answer to. On the other hand, a decentralized exchange is an exchange that is not run by a company. Instead, they are ran by code. Changes to the exchange only happen when the code is changed, and due to their decentralized nature, a government cannot regulate, control, or even shut them down like they could do to Coinbase. Using stablecoins, you can trade back and forth from Ethereum to a stablecoin, from that stablecoin to Bitcoin, from that Bitcoin back to another stablecoin, whenever you want using a decentralized exchange. This way, you don't have to pay as many fees, you don't have to wait as long, or you don't have to worry about the government tracking or canceling your transactions as if you would have to do as if you used a centralized exchange. Now, this is actually a really good advantage of stablecoins. Let's say you purchase 100 Bitcoins for $100. Bitcoin then goes up to $10,000 per coin. So you sell 50 bitcoins for half a million dollars. So you trade 50 of those bitcoins to DAI or USDC, which are stable coins for half a million dollars. And then you hold it when you can then buy back at a lower price. It's almost like a cryptocurrency savings account. Stable coins are also beneficial when investing on platforms like Aave or Compound, where you can actually earn interest on your crypto assets because you don't have to worry about the price fluctuations. 20% APR in Ethereum does not matter if Ethereum drops by half. However, 20% APR on your USDC stablecoin is delicious. Moving on, we're going to move into some technical stuff. How do stablecoins work? Well, mainly they work in two different ways. Collateralization or through algorithmic mechanisms, also known as smart contract manipulation. Those are a lot of big words, but we're going to break it down for you. First off, fiat collateralization means that each coin is backed by something. In most cases, that is one US dollar. In some though, it's other countries' currencies like the euro, or even gold. Tether is in fact one of the most major companies that released their USDT stablecoin using fiat collateralization. Now there are some rumors that they do not have a dollar for every USDT that they have minted. Kind of like there's rumors like you haven't subscribed yet, but we'll get onto that later. The pros of a fiat collateralized stablecoin is that they are quite stable, much more than the alternative. However, they do have problems. The first is that the money required to put up for each USDT cannot be invested. This could mean millions 
millions of dollars for that company that are not earning interest. Another problem is someone at the company could embezzle or steal a bunch of that collateral. And one last problem, specifically that Tether faces, is that it's very difficult to prove that you own the total amount of collateral. Let's move on to the second method, because as an alternative to the fiat collateralization method, some stablecoins are controlled by smart contracts. Some people call this algorithmically pegged stablecoins. Now the benefit of this method is that it is very easy to audit. You just take a look at the smart contract code. Another benefit is that there's no physical assets to steal. However, some of the problems can seem much worse. Smart contract controlled stablecoins are usually much more volatile simply due to how they work. What they do is they must manipulate the supply of their coins to adjust the price. Now, the algorithm differs among each stablecoin, but there are three main algorithms. We may actually make an entire video about these three specific algorithms. One changes the amount of coin in your wallet each time that you check it so that the value stays roughly the same, $1. The second system uses a money printer and a bond reward system to adjust the price to $1. A third is very similar to the second, however, it uses something called coupons. Again, you should click that subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on notifications because we will be coming out with a video specifically on these three algorithms and how they work. Moving on though, how do you buy a stablecoin? In short, stablecoins are bought and sold on exchanges, both centralized and decentralized. It's very easy to buy Tether or DAI or USDC on a centralized exchange like Coinbase or Gemini. Another method is you could buy something like Ethereum on Coinbase, transfer it to your private wallet, and then use a decentralized exchange like Uniswap and trade that ETH into a stablecoin. Now it's time to be a little more pessimistic around the topic of stablecoins. While stablecoins do have good traits around them, there are a few things that you should think about before fully ditching your savings account and tossing all your savings into a stablecoin. First is the lack of insurance. When you put your money into a bank savings or checking account, it is actually insured by the government, at least if you're in the USA. Some banks are FDIC insured, meaning they'll repay up to $250,000 worth of money that is stolen or lost from the bank to you. Stablecoins do not have this advantage yet. If a company that started and is operating that stablecoin goes bankrupt, then you'll most likely lose all of your investment and be left empty-handed. Secondly, we have to bring back up the collateralization issue. Remember how we said that there were rumors that Tether may actually not be backed by true cash? If they aren't, and that scares people, the price could fluctuate a lot. It could even cause it to be unpegged to a dollar because Tether is only worth what people think it is worth. And right now, that is one dollar. If the belief changes, then the value changes. So coming to a conclusion, stable coins are a great advancement for cryptocurrencies at the current moment, and we're excited to see where they go from here. If you're putting your money into them, we recommend to be cautious and as always, always do your own research. As we end this video, we want to thank you for watching this video. We hope that you enjoyed it. We really hope that you learned something. And most importantly, for the YouTube algorithm, we hope to see you next time.